us as black students we came out and we had to stand there in front of cops who had their guns and stuff because we were scared that if we don't go out there what if the cops shoot these young black men back to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution so in today's video I'm going to be doing an updated Q&A and in particular I'm going to be answering your questions that you guys asked me right here on my YouTube post before we get started with this video I want to say two things the first one is 13k for the babies Thank you guys so much for 13,000 subscribers to everyone who is watching subscribing and sharing I really truly truly appreciate you and as I always say this is not my win but this is our win now the second thing that I want to say is I want to give a shout out to Dali Temba Dali Temba commented on my video and asked me for a shout out so Dali Temba shout out to you thank you so much for your support so without further ado let's get started with this Q&A first question how did people in America react to you saying you are from South Africa? What are some of the stereotypes Americans had about South Africa? Um, how do they react? Every time I say I'm from South Africa, you always get, oh my gosh, really? Wow, that's so amazing. I do get the occasional, oh, I have a friend from Uganda or I went to Tanzania to do mission work. Oh, that's good for you, baby. Um, another stereotype, I don't even know if this is a popular stereotype, but someone was like to me, why do you speak English? What kind of sh is that? I want to slap this person across the face, guys. In fact, let me tell you something, guys. I almost did, but Jesus has my heart. Jesus has my heart. I'm Wait. living for the Lord. I am living for the Lord. So I was like, why do you speak English? And there was no answer um, but if you want to know more about shocking things Americans say to me as an African student check out this video next question how did your parents react when you told them you're going to study overseas um, fun fact my parents were actually the ones who were pushing me to go study overseas I actually was not mm, too keen in the very beginning um, but my parents were very insistent they were like listen you have an opportunity here why not just give it a try so I was like you know what if it's, I just went for it. So how did they respond? They responded great because it was their idea. Um, when you came to America to study, was it your first time coming there or you visited before? I had been to America, I think two times before that, but I had never been to the state. I live in Pennsylvania. i had never been to Pennsylvania before. And I must say that traveling, like vacation is entirely different to living somewhere. I had thought, oh, you know, I've been to America before, you know, everything's gonna be fine. Everything was not fine in the beginning. I actually went through like a brief depression for like six months, if that's brief, but you know, you are. Anyway, uh, but things turned out pretty well. Are there better job opportunities in the US than in SA? Um, well, how do I answer this question? I mean, I would say you have access to some companies that SA doesn't have, but of course there are companies in SA that America doesn't have. I would say that, you know, I personally believe that if you make it in America, you make it in the world. You know what I mean? You have that kind of access. Um, you have access to better technology in some ways. Um, so are there better job opportunities? Yeah, I think they can be better uh, job opportunities in some fields. Next question. When you get a scholarship, who pays for the flight? So I'm assuming this has got to do with my, how I got to study in America. So for those of you who wanted to know how I ended up studying in America, please go check out this video where I explain everything. Now to answer this question, I had to pay for my own flight. The scholarship only covers my academics. How often do you go home and is it expensive? I go home in May because summer vacation starts in May, ends in August. So from May to August, I tend to be in South Africa. Then I come back again in December and I leave in Jan. So twice a year. After school, are you planning on staying and working or coming back to SA? Honestly, I feel like I really believe I'm in God's hands and anything that God wants for me will happen. I believe it will never pass me by, even if my biggest enemy wanted it to happen. Um, to answer that question, I, you know, if there's an opportunity for me in America to work, 100%, like, 
I'll take it and see where it leads me. Um, but I'm also very open to coming back to South Africa. Since you were afraid to go to America, has that changed? Um, yeah, it has changed because you know I did it and I had to go for it. So, and let me tell you something actually, the things that I mentioned in that video, for those of you who don't know which video I'm talking about, it is this video. But every single thing that I mentioned in that video has come to pass. I actually had an encounter at my school where the police racially profiled some of my black friends and um, us as black students, we came out and we had to stand there in front of cops who had their guns and stuff because we were scared that if we don't go out there, what if the cops shoot these young black men and they stop them for something that they never even did, guys. So I've had dangerous encounters with police. Um, I know someone who's been in a shooting like, yeah, the things that I was worried about in that video, I've been confronted by, I've been going, I went to Black Lives Matter marches, etc, etc. So um, yeah, I definitely had to confront all those things. and. Um, I, I do have a little bit of anxiety sometimes, not too much, because sometimes I feel uncomfortable, you know, especially with the mass shooting thing, which can happen literally freaking anywhere. You go to like a grocery store and like anything can happen. You go to school and like anything can happen. Um, so there is a little bit of anxiousness that I live with, but you know, my faith, my hope, my trust is truly in God. My life is in his hands and I will not die a second before my time. My soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I don't have a question for you, but I'd like to say thanks for your videos. They really help. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. I appreciate it. The next one is, hey, I would love to ask if you have a driver's license here in South Africa and are you allowed to drive in America? Yes, I do have a South African driver's license and when I'm in South Africa, I do drive. I got my license in 2018. First time, by the way, I got it on my first time, baby, baby, and I didn't buy a cold drink for it either. I earned it. Um, so yeah, I do have a license and I'm not allowed to drive in America because I don't have an American license, but I could get one. Um, but I don't even have a car in America, so it's like, you know. If you were to live in South Africa, which city would you live in and why? I mean, I, I do live in South Africa. I mean, I'm between both countries, but I live in... I live in Johannesburg um, and I feel like I continue living in Johannesburg because you know there's opportunity here my friends are here there's a lot to do here um, I'm not too keen for Cape Town because we all hear and know about the racist tendencies of Cape Town and personally I feel like I'd get into fights every single day like beach is great but now when did you move to America and when are you coming back to South Africa to visit I moved to America August 2018 I'm currently in South Africa right now to visit what encouraged you to start a youtube channel i always used to make videos and i just had nothing to do with my videos so i was like you know what let me just make youtube and put my videos on there but apart from that i also had and still have a deep passion to speak about things that people don't want to speak about and educate inspire connect with people be real be honest you know what i mean and yeah also just an avenue for me to let out my creativity you know i'm studying accounting so like that's not a very artistic field so doing youtube just allows me to live in the other side of my truth where do you see yourself in the next five years yo hey guys are you interviewing me for a date oh my gosh like are you gonna are you gonna send your uncles with a lot of suit with these kind of questions please please come on now um where do i see myself in the next five years married um and uh working in accounting or running my own business um having a successful youtube channel multiple streams of income happy happy more than anything and just living my life in color living the life i want to live and most importantly living a life connected with god um and in five years i will be 27 years old so maybe maybe i'll be pregnant maybe i'll have a kid i don't know do you enjoy talking english all the time no i don't enjoy talking english all the time i man you know just english man. let me tell you something about english english it doesn't have that thing man you know that thing to make you just yeah it does not have that thing and sometimes when you want to express yourself english does not get the point across sometimes you want to yo eh hi bo patum ah you know and you know sabah well you know and you know etc etc um but when i am in america i do call my friends in south africa and we do get to speak vernac and also when i'm at home i do speak a mix between vernac and english so yeah it's nice man to speak your language or to speak my zulu sax but you know to speak a little bit of zulu a little bit of kosa 
little bit of, you know, I suck, but I'm gonna do it anyway. What's something you'll never do again? Uh, I never say never, but I don't think I ever want to bungee jump ever again. Um, I would skydive again. If you haven't seen my skydiving video, go check it out. But bungee jumping, ah, uh, guys, I, I, mm -mm. Have you experienced any sort of racist or discrimination since you moved there? Um, I would say I've been exposed to it, but I haven't had something happen to me directly. Yo, my school, there are people who write like racist things on tables and stuff. And you know, they the whole Black Lives Matter thing. It impacted my school, looking at the way people do things, you know, especially during election time, people were so aggressive with it, you know, um, because people used Donald Trump as an excuse to be racist and I'm again I'm not making any political stances but people who some people who are voting for Donald Trump it, it they capitalize on it to be racist it wasn't just about oh he's a good president or whatever but you know they used it to fuel their racist desires so yeah I have been exposed to uh, some stuff but again not, no one ever like came up to me and said hey you little beep which university do you go to and how did you get in? So I answered the question about how I moved to America So I'm not going to be answering any of those questions in this video and the other part of this video guys Let's talk about it This question you guys ask and it's not just this person. It's so many people but this question you guys ask of what university do you go to? It's weird It's a weird question to ask. That's basically asking me where do you live? You know, because as I mentioned in my video that I stay on campus. So if I tell you what school I go to, essentially I'm telling you where I stay. And obviously that is a um, security breach and stuff. So like, I mean, we all know you can't go on the internet and like put your address, you know, so please stop asking this question. I'm, I'm not gonna answer it. How did you and Angie be friends? Oh my goodness. Angie didn't like me when we met. And I, oh. So we met through my friend Daniel. It was during like orientation period. So we had gone to South Campus to watch some kind of show during orientation. And Daniel was my friend. And Daniel came with Angie and he was like, oh, here's this girl, her name is Angie. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So when we went to the concert hall, like I wanted to sit next to Daniel because I wanted to talk to him. So it was Daniel, Angie, me, right? And there was someone else on the other side. So I was like, um, can I please sit next to Daniel? And she gave me the biggest stank look you will ever imagine. And then she moved and let me sit next to Daniel. So that's how we met um, and we never really spoke after that. But actually she was friends with my roommate at the time. And then one day uh, she knocked on my door looking for my roommate cause they were like a, a little squad at the time. And I opened the door, she came in. She was like, guys, I'm so scared. I watched a horror movie. Can I please sleep here? And mind you, like, I don't even know this girl. My roommate knows her. So my roommate was like, um, is it okay? And I was like, ugh, whatever, you know? And pretty much ever since then, she would like come over often and we'd play Uno and we'd play other games. And so we pretty much became friends through that. It's just like she would frequent my room often and we ended up becoming close, I guess. And how we really, really became friends, she has the best heart you will ever find in a person. You know, like if ever I needed help, she was so willing to help. And she's not a person who needs to have much to give much. She will give much without having much. The thing about me, I'm not scared to start a conversation with anyone. I'm not scared to talk to anyone. But I, I feel that I'm not good at cementing friendships. Because I feel like how you cement a friendship is you need to see each other, talk to each other. But like, I suck at that. And the good thing about Angie is, she's good at that so she would come to me often she would talk to me often she would you know reach out often and whenever people reach out to me i do receive them so it's not like i'm an asshole who's just like bye unless my spirit doesn't like you so with her doing that me being receptive it made me comfortable enough to talk to her so that cemented into a friendship and well here we are is the lifestyle more expensive that side? I think if you're coming from South Africa, it will be because of exchange rate. Um, things like McDonald's and stuff is like super, 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 super cheap. 
um what else i mean apart from that i don't know guys also my expenses are kind of limited i mean i've never had to look for an apartment or anything so i don't know prices of apartments or cars i've never looked into that kind of stuff so i'm not too sure not too sure about that one at first how did you interact with the americans and how did angie get to be your best friend so i just answered the angie question and how did i first get to interact i mean like normal i like i just said i'm not afraid to talk to anyone so i just strike up a conversation people are pretty nice and you know from the i don't know you just keep talking i don't know guys <laughs> um what do you miss most about South Africa? Patum, guys, I know I'm supposed to say something like family and stuff, and I and I, I do miss my family and I love it. But built on go, woo! America has beef jerky now, and it's not even nice. It's not nice, guys. I don't like it at all. At all, at all. Chai. Anyway, I miss built on a lot, and I miss just the food in SA. I miss the food a lot, a lot. Yeah, guys, food. <laughs> you know, um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I post a lot of food and someone was like to me, bro, you really came back to South Africa to eat. Yes, yes, I did. Because I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Please, I like food. And there's nothing wrong with liking food. Uh-uh. Do you like South African food better than American food? Yes, I do. Do you see yourself permanently staying in America in the future? I don't see myself like... I, you know, I don't want to curse myself. I don't want to rule things out and it's in my, it's my destiny. But what I'm saying is God's will be done and what is meant to be will be. However, America is not a place where I envision myself living and dying. I wouldn't want to die there. And I, I don't think I'd even want to raise my black children there, you know? So to answer that question, no, I don't see myself. But again, you know, whatever is my destiny is my destiny. Okay. Not to be weird, but out of curiosity, what's your kink? How much do you know about BDSM? That's weird. Somebody didn't watch my celibacy video. <laughs> Are you or have you always been an A student at school? I have always performed well academically, yes. In high school, I went to awards evening every single year, but I was never a top 10 student. I was never a student who got purely 80s and 90s. I would say I got between 70s, 80s, some 60s, like that's what my grades were, um, especially towards matric. But since entering university, I have gotten literally straight A's since I started up to now and I'm about to go into my fourth year. And I've made the Dean's list every single year, like thank God. And that's something I was worried about as well, is I was worried I wouldn't be able to cope with the American standard of education, but I've actually done really well. So I'm really happy about that. What are you studying? Accounting. How did it all go with you leaving SA? Because African black parents are a big problem. My African black parents were not a problem. They were actually the ones encouraging me to go. And even now, like, they're still, for them, they're like, dude, if you want to go live in America, go. If you want to go live somewhere else, go. Like, go start your life anywhere. Don't be confined to limited to South Africa. Would you try and join YouTube house in South Africa? Uh, never say never, but for now I'm gonna say no because I don't like drama. Like, let me tell you one thing about me, I, I do not like drama. And I know everybody says that I don't like drama, but whenever there's conflict or fighting or shouting or screaming, my spirit becomes so down. I literally feel tense and awkward and, and then I start twitching. So like whenever I get super stressed, I start like having this twitch on my finger or my eye like you know what I mean so I don't think I'd want to because I just don't like drama and also as someone who does not drink who doesn't smoke I feel like I would not have enough drama even to be on those kinds of shows or situations do you have a lot of friends in America I would say I know a lot of people I don't think I have a lot of friends there have actually been times especially during COVID where I felt like oh my gosh like I really don't have any friends you know I went through a really tough patch uh, this yeah in the beginning of this year guys yo you don't understand i was crying every day i really felt that i didn't have friends so and i wouldn't say I have a lot of friends no but the friends i do have are the best and they love me does your family from south africa come more to america or you come more to south africa i go more to south africa my family's only been to america for vacation like twice but haven't been there ever since when i first moved to america my mom came with me to like help me like to help me get situated and they do plan to come for my graduation which should be next year 
do you miss your friends in South Africa um the friends that I do have yes I miss them but we do get on the phone a lot like me and my one friend will be on the call for like three hours literally so um, I do get to speak to them a lot but I do miss seeing them in person and stuff and I would say the one thing about being in between two countries and being in America for like the last year without coming back is it has not allowed me to grow my friendships in South Africa like I find myself to be a person who does not have many friends my friends have since grown moved on made their own friends expanded their, their friendship networks but I haven't I come back and I'm still looking for the same people and those same people aren't even friends with each other anymore or you know others have moved and others have different friends that I don't vibe with so it's so interesting living abroad really does make you end up just not having friends actually <laughs> so yeah I might make a video to talk more about that. If you want me to really expand on that, comment down below. Number one, are you single? Cause wow. Number two, am I your type? Listen, listen, plus, 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 plus. We want serious inquiries only. Serious inquiries only. Please, oh, if you want to take me out, if you want to be my partner, my boyfriend, my whatever, I beg, drop an email. Eh? Drop an email. I'll forward it to my parents and uh, they should get back to you within five business days, eh? How is it in America? Have you been to Target? Yes, I've been to Target. I've made quite a few Target runs. Target is actually quite expensive and it's one of those spaces where the ambiance is so nice it makes you want to shop, man, and it's bad because it's expensive. Um, and how is it in America? That's such a broad question, guys. Um, but I would say living in America is as it is living anywhere. You know, once you live in a place, you become a, like adapted to it and it's no longer, ooh, it's just, I mean, I live here. Hi, when did you start your YouTube channel? I started it August, 2018. Uh, what's your totem? Bro, what's a totem? Is a totem like, like a family totem, like a family crest? Oh, I'm gonna Google this quick. A totem is an, is an animal or plant serving as an emblem of a family or clan. Oh yeah, see, yeah, I, was on, I was on the right path. Um, I don't have one. The Lion of the Tribe of Judah, bro. Do people use WhatsApp in America? Oh, barely. And are you in a relationship in the US? Please, 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 please. I've answered the question, eh? Who's your best friend? That's a big question. Honestly, as a person who doesn't have a lot of friends, all my friends feel like my best friends. You're not embarrassed. This is really embarrassing. Those are all of the questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed getting to know more about me. Thank you so much to everyone who put in a question. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I will be back with more videos. Peace and love, guys.